torrid and dramatic, desolate, unplugged. Ahead of us, an exacting schedule as we go deep into the heart of a billion year old landscape. Grey cliffs, white screes, and of course, black bogs. And a pretty lively bike, certainly in colour as well as power, which is why we've teamed up with Bosch and Cube to take on this massive ride. Ahead of us, a well-researched route, but one that could easily be compromised by waist-high river crossings, crippling climbs, vandalous slabs of ancient rock, and ruinous, arm-weakening single track. Being watched by sheep laughing, and deer scarpering into the distance. Welcome to Torridon. Welcome to the weird world of knowing, but not knowing what the hell lies ahead. Not that far from here, Fort William is often regarded as the outdoor capital of the UK. It's where Chris Smith is having his summer holiday and enjoying some Cullen skink. On his low altitude quick fix ride, he'll be using the more detailed Bosch 9 display to navigate. Up here in the far north, however, I'll be taking on a very different adventure using the more minimalist Kiox display and a less fancy breakfast. Over the next few days then, we'll be embarking on two intense, but oh so different Scottish EMTB experiences. Meticulous pre-planning versus spur of the moment exploration. I swear, no sooner had the sun gone down yet, the sun was rising again, probably about 3.30 in the morning. So uh, we got cracking about 5.30 and uh, as you can see, it's uh, just past six and our first challenge of the day is to get some breakfast down us without being eaten alive. I've come prepared. There we go, car. Oh, get out. Right, Aidy, get a grip. Why is that skin so soft? You'd have thought a mountain guide would have been able to deal with some flies, wouldn't it? <laughs> Look at the state in him. <laughs> okay, so quick overview of where we are. Now, we're in northwest Scotland and the area is west of Ross. So we're going to be riding the Torridon area and this is the kind of area we're going to be riding in. So we're heading in a, in a southeasterly direction and then hang in. Uh, southwest before heading north again. So um, problem of the minute is the flies. Oh look at this! Look at the mist on that hill over there. Look. Coming over the top of that. A trip like this shouldn't be taken lightly. The route chosen after much research and feedback from experienced riders. We traced our route, downloaded it, and connected it to the Kiox display. The trouble was our route was 27 miles with around 4,000 feet of climbing and descending. But in a place like Northwest Scotland, it's not simply the distance you have to take into account with range planning, it's the surface. I knew that boggy and steppy ground would be sucking the life out of our bodies and also our 625 watt hour batteries. Having checked the estimation on the Bosch range assistant, it seemed quite likely that this was very much gonna be a two battery day. AD, on the other hand, our experienced mountain guide from the Italian Riviera, had other ideas. Now, what we'll do, if I'm getting low, I'll, I'll then just, you just put your new battery in, and then if I'm going low, I'll just use your third, whatever you've got left in yours. I think I'll... So we've got, three, we've got some between us. So we, we'll be fine. So there's already some debate over whether AD, a mountain guide, is going to take a spare battery. AD, put that, bring that battery back here. So we've got uh, 625 watt hour batteries. So um, I don't think it's just about the height and the distance, but also the type of terrain it is. Because when you've got like rocky ground, I'm, I'm concerned that you might be, I think you might be making a mistake by not uh, taking an extra battery. Now, obviously I'm 92 kilos and I got uh, my backpack with the battery in it and water. AD's what, 80 kilos? 80. So, yeah, so I, I guess I'm saying there's a bit of debate going on here at the minute. There's as only to, one way to find out. All right, I need to take a battery. I'll take your battery. <laughs> wow, pretty big landscape. Now, in as much as we know the general direction of the trail and the overall topography, 
I always get slightly nervous going into places like this and that's because, I think it's because you don't actually know what the surface of the trail is going to be like, like how rocky is it going to be, how steep is it going to be and other things such as the weather and maybe mechanicals, it's uh, certainly a place you don't want to go into by yourself. Now on our ride today we're going to be using the Bosch Kiox display which is one of the more minimalist uh, designs in the Bosch range uh, and I've simply downloaded the route from uh, my Komoot uh, via, uh, via GPX and put it onto the Kiox so I can simply follow that. Plus uh, we're in the UK and in the UK we use the Ordnance Survey Ranger maps uh, just as a backup. Like I said, anything can happen out in these mountains. So as it's an extreme ride and very different to Chris's ride, you need to be very sure you can get back uh, to safety. Had we bitten off more than we could chew? Were we going to get munched by midges? Could we go the distance? Very quickly, high technology gets put in its place amongst the towering cliffs and heavy terrain in the Valley of a Hundred Hills. As much as EMTBs are the facilitators to get to these raw, unplugged places, it'll always be the human factor that decides. Within a few hundred metres, the going was already pretty tough. Paul has loose rocks. He's just wrestling it all the way. I'm just sweating. <laughs> I thought it'd be rain coming down my helmet, but no, no it's wet. I'm, just... I'm amazed that... There's nobody here. And no midges. This river crossing seemed challenging, however, it was but a simple hors d'oeuvre. The adventure had now truly begun, punishing us straight out of the gate, yet at the same time, absolutely breathtaking. Wow, sun has just come out. And the cliffs above us are absolutely mind-blowing. Oh, it's also flattened out for a brief moment. I have no doubt this really is punishing, punishing terrain. Look at that. I mean, just look at that. It is absolutely stunning. This is proper mountain biking. 100%. So we've got a bit of a route finding going on here. I think we need to hang a right somewhere. Look at that. Whoa. So the thing with a trip like this is, is once you're in, you're actually in. And it's probably not everybody's cup of tea, but um, we're now just looking at my Kiox here we got. Uh, I've done 11k AD and uh, just over 400 meters. So not bad, but <laughs> the 37 to go. <laughs> and like I said, the, like I said at the beginning, it's always a worry the type of, of type of terrain that's the type of surface you have to deal with. So you're looking at these rocks. So in some ways we're quite lucky because it's super grippy. It's good conditions, isn't it? But yeah. uh, the other end of the spectrum is the fact that it's all loose and it just saps your energy. But um, yeah, like I said, not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> What's he doing? What did he do? <laughs> did you get, was that on camera? With the mountains rising majestically above us, we knew we were making ground, albeit slowly, but soon came across the missing link, an incredibly flowing piece of single track beneath the cliffs, and one that would lead us finally to the descent into Corlair. Or so we thought. Well guys, you might have been wondering what bikes we've been riding in this stunning environment, and what better place to chat bikes than surrounded by a trio of Munros. Well, uh, I've been on a Cube a Stereo 160 Action Team. Now the wheels on this bike are Newman 
Evolution, they're alloy wheels and they're shod with Schwalbe Magic Mary tires in Adex soft compound, which I have to say have been absolutely incredible on this uh, even grippier bit of, uh, well, I don't actually know what the rock is, but it is absolute amazing uh, surface to ride on. The suspension up front, we've got a Fox 38, 170 mil or is it 160 mil? Uh, but nevertheless, there's a 160 mil chassis to this Cube Action Team frame. I think it's lovely color. Uh, up front is uh, all calm fiber and the chain stay and the seat stay are alloy. There's a Fox transfer seat post on there and a seat which I think it's a Venge, I don't think it's a Venge, but anyway, it's been really comfortable. But guys, the heart of the matter is the motor and the battery. We've got a Bosch motor on there, uh, kicking out 85 newton meters of torque, which I have to say is essential in a place like this. And inside here, we've got uh, a 625 watt hour battery. And remember, we've taken two of them. Aidy's bike is his mate's. It's a Cube Stereo TM, and this is uh, 140, 150. Main difference to this bike, it's got 29 inch wheels and a Minion DHR on the back and an Asagai up front. Same wheel set as on the 160 bike, slightly less travel. The fourth gen motor on there and the 625 watt hour battery. First saddle then. Wait. What we got, yeah, what we got? Okay, so we've done 620 meters. However, we've only done 14 kilometers. So Aidy, how do you reckon this is compared to the Alps? You know, you guide in the Alps and, you know, Italy, it's pretty different, isn't it? Do you know what? It's like, I've always sort of said, why come to Scotland when the Alps is just as close? And I thought, what's here? And I'm telling you, I'm eating a big piece of humble pie tonight. Yeah. This is just one of my best rides, to be honest. Wow. It is. Wow. Ridden in amazing <laughs> places. And this is just, it's just the wildness and the remoteness of it, yeah. you know? It, you feel the only thing that man's done is this track. Yeah. You know, Robert the Bruce would be looking at this and it wouldn't have changed. It's, uh, yeah. it's incredible. Absolutely yeah. incredible. Well, here we go, our first bit of descending. So loose, can you hear that? <laughs> Look at that prime. Okay. Um, uh, so, slight spanner in the works here. Um, whilst we were climbing on the slab, we lost concentration and we could see the single track just diving off and it, it just seemed like that was the way the trail went. So, I simply switched the motor off and um, obviously switched the motor off, you haven't got Kiox to, to navigate you. And all of a sudden we were like, AD shouted, and he said, whoa, whoa, whoa. And we were, basically very very off track by we've just dropped like a couple of hundred meters so I mean this is straight up this wasn't meant to happen so that's gonna have a knock-on effect now on the battery levels uh, if you remember earlier AD was in two minds of whether to bring two batteries but not thinking that now here wrong yet again so yeah we've lost we're gonna we're gonna lose some charge for sure and uh, we need to climb back up 300 meters not good but it proves like stuff like this happens in these places. Having made the mistake of watching the track and not the map, we'd made a fuel sapping mistake and had to retrace 300 meters vertical to Coil Grande, where we were greeted not by a bank or a slope, but a cliff. This is insanely hard. We hit the saddle wasted and also having squandered valuable time and battery in what was quickly developing to be a very tough day in an unforgiving landscape. Oh, four foot snake. Oof. Steve Jones adventures. It's like 
Jeremy Clarkson, except we haven't got a full production crew in a helicopter. <laughs> is this the actual saddle? Or is it a false one? Delation or pure devastation? Oh man, can't tell you how. I can't tell you how good that still looks. Oh. It's now ahead of us lay a 2,000 foot descent of pure, unadulterated single track. Surface with debris from the Munro peaks of Skor Road, Vian Liat Moor, we set about to make up time. Whoa. Just whoa. And away we go. <laughs> Just ridiculous. Oh, be so careful. Oh, my God. Rough in here. For miles, the route tracked east, one that was easily followed on the Keok display before the rock turned into slab, but not before AD had found some bock. I can't get my foot out of the car. Oh no. <laughs> Is your video? Oh, there you go. Oh. Give, them, uh, give them one another bog. Oh, <laughs> See there, Eddie? The final meters dropping into Achna Shialak was dreamy, often fast, always technical, before levelling on the banks of the River Lair. That was such a long descent. Crazy. So now we're coming to a different kind of trail in the woods. Really is like a full on downhill track. So you can just skit around everywhere. Ach na shalak. Ach na shalak. We cross the railway line that links the mainland to Sky, do some stag spotting before we stop for a drop of lunch and a fresh battery change. Or so we thought. You wanted to bring one battery. Uh, um, what's your battery level on at the minute, halfway round? Uh, <laughs> it's 6%. <laughs> <laughs> what was the basis? <laughs> What was the basis of making that very silly judgment at 6 a.m. this morning? Oh, I, it's just the midges. I wasn't thinking right. <laughs> Blame the midges. If that had been single, smooth single track, you'd have done it one battery, possibly. Yeah. Here you go. Adrian Nash, battery number two. <sighs> How do you say that in Italian, AD? Batteria numero due. Numero due? Numero due. The stupid person from Italy has uh, forgotten to charge his battery. Even though yours truly gave him a fully charged battery to take with him. What an idiot. How many percent are we on? So Adrian has now got 40% in his new battery. I've got 15 extra, so he's got 55%. And I think you'll find, if I switch this on, this is how it should look. 100, 100, 100. Right, so halfway point, uh, a very relaxing lunch, and now ahead of us, a significant arm wrestle with some Torridonian rock for the rest of the afternoon. Are you ready, Adrian? Because I ain't. It's worth bearing in mind that had we been doing a trip like this in the Alps, the big distances and unknown terrain wouldn't have been as much of a worry as we'd have been able to tap into one of Bosch's many charging stations. But up here, in one of the remotest parts of Europe, things were very different. With AD having to nurse his queue back home, we were hoping for some smoother terrain than we'd already been through. 
And so it was, guided back on track by Kiox, ever cautious of using too much fuel, we headed back into the madness. And so, the double track ends, and here we go. Oh, check out that little house over there, or a bothy. Very cute. Tea, coffee. Whoa. Coir Fionnareich. Wow. And this is the reward you get for coming into the mountains. What a spot, AD. I mean, it is so cool. And it says you can stay here anytime other than from the 1st of September to the 20th of October. Yep. Wow. Come here, camp down, have some food. Granted, you can't charge your batteries up, but bring a spare. Oh, stepping stones. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Not even funny. Begin to cramp. I tell you what, if anyone out there is still in any doubt of e mountain bikes but still wants a hard day in the hills, this is the boy. Ooh, bit of hand up. <laughs> this is the boy. Now heading north, we are soon faced with a choice. Head due west at Bialaka Khorgeb or continue north to Bialak Nalis. We take the westerly route, one advised to us by a man travelling by the name of Tattoo Dave. 300 metres of Torridon's finest sandstone awaited. It was big and it was bad, very bad. As I dug hard for the saddle, a formidable view slowly revealed itself above my bars. The imposing white flanks of Miao Kianjerg a surreal landscape in the low evening light, and with still a long way to go. That is like nothing I've ever seen before. Oh my God, that is mind blowing. Holy <laughs> that is insane. Guys, wow, that was worth every single foot. Fatigued and now running on vapours, ahead of us was a monster descent. The kind of terrain that needs respect, focus, and an energy that we really didn't have much of. But spirits are soon raised as the pace and flow intensifies. Adrenaline bringing back focus, and yet always humble that as big as these Munros are, it can only take a small stone to bring you down. But the Torridonian sandstone has been kind to us on grip, and so it was, we scud our way north to Annette. Oh, <laughs> he's not going to ride through there, is he? I mean, he's <laughs> here. <laughs> Can't believe he did that. <laughs> Sent to Torridon. Oh. Have to say, looking forward to lying down. I hope I don't lie down before I get there, though. You know what I mean. Whoa. Thanks, Eddie. Rocks in the shins. And so, after 10 hours on the Bosch motor on this next generation ride, we're almost at the end. Over 4,000 feet of rock climbing on over 50 kilometers of single track. It had been one of the greatest days out ever. Sometimes you simply need to disconnect to reconnect. But it had also proved just why Westeros is one of the remotest parts of the UK. Challenging, intense, high risk, and certainly no place to get lost. It had definitely been a day that had pushed our bikes and our bodies physically and technically to the edge. 
as we dropped down to sea level at Anat. I wondered for about a split second how Chris was getting on on his holiday ride. Tune in tomorrow to find out.